Good morning. 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 Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here today and all the mother figures. Uh, we appreciate all that you do to deal with our shenanigans, so thank you. Um, we also will be having Bible study this Wednesday, so that's from 10 to 11.30. We'd love to have you join us. Um, it's a good opportunity to just hang out and uh, learn about the upcoming week uh, the readings, so that's something fun. Um, game night is not this upcoming week, but the week after, um, May 20th. And if you have questions, I will point you to my husband who is wandering around in the playground area, so he can help you. He is there, I promise. Um, I think he can help you uh, if you have any questions about it, but it's a good time. Uh, I'm back to doing communion this week. I'm finally feeling like 98% better. So, um, so yes, so that's good news. Um, I think that is all I have. Nope, Fred is raising his hand. Go ahead. Uh, we have some leftover tulip bulbs and lily bulbs in the, in the room off the sanctuary here. Um, if anybody would like to take them home and plant them, so they will come up again next year. If you want to take them, they're free right. to go home. Yes, and they do look a little dismal, so please rescue them because yeah. they look sad. So take one, revive it. Um, and then Karen, yes, you have. Uh, I would like to invite everybody. It's mainly for women, but if men come, we won't kick you out. Um, to the Church Women United May Friendship Day celebration. It's this coming Saturday at Table of Grace Church, 21st and Sassafras, uh, at 11 a.m. So if you need a ride or want to call carpool, let me know. Thank you. So men are invited, they will not kick you out. Um, I also wanted to thank Riley again. So Riley will be filling in for Vicki while she's gone on her European adventure. Um, so they have made it to, I think they're on their third stop now. So they're moving every couple days. Um, and I believe they do have their luggage. So they are doing a little bit better than last week's update. They have clothes and they are settling better. So that's always good news. So, um, are there any other announcements before we begin with our prelude? All right, if not, we'll begin with our prelude. <coughs> Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 
Christ is risen in me. Hallelujah. The waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life, flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood, and you opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now, in these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. And now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. We will now sing our gathering hymn.
a God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will, and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter took all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Psalm today is the 23rd Psalm. We'll read it responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green and leads me to the waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. The Lord I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Through the goodness and mercy shall follow me in all the days of my life. And I will tell the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from the seventh chapter of Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the land, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. He said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. 
For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. discrimination and racism, 
families struggling to make ends meet. We can even look in our own families to see where there are some really hard situations and experiences that we or others have been through. I think in those moments it's easy to get bogged down and to wonder where God is, and that can be an absolutely legitimate question. It does not speak to doubt or lack of faith if you ask that. It's okay to wonder it at times. But what we hear over and over in our readings and in the promises that are made at baptism and reaffirmed by our community is that God promises us that this is not all there is and that we will get safely home. In our psalm today, we hear of a shepherd who guides us through the good times and walks us with us through the very darkest moments of our lives. At a funeral recently, I had the great honor of listening to a preacher give a sermon where he talked about this psalm and how sometimes it's easy to pitch a tent and make a home in the valley of the shadow of death. That in our mourning or grief or pain, it's easy to just get stuck there. What the psalm promises us is that God goes with us through that valley of of the shadow of death. That God won't leave us to build a home there in our despair. That one day we will get through to the other side and be welcomed into a home prepared for us. We hear in our reading from Revelation today that there will be a day when there will be no more tears and there will be no more division. Where we will see a great multitude of every nation from all the tribes and peoples and languages standing in the presence of God. All of these barriers that separate us in the world uh, today, all of the ways that we judge others and all of the ways that our world is so broken and so divided, that will not be how it is in God's home. That's the promise that we cling to. And so as we wait for that day, we live in a way that tries to hear God's voice, even when that voice feels far away and we get a little bit lost. We trust in the promise that God will get us safely home, celebrating us when we arrive. Now Max Lucado in his book on the 23rd Psalm called Traveling Light talks about the luggage that we carry with us. He goes line by line through Psalm 23, and he talks about all the different bags and luggage that bog us down. He tells of this story at the very end of this uh, psalm when he talks about dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. His dog's name is Molly, and he writes, After a month in our new house, she ran away. I came home one night to find the place unusually quiet. Molly was gone. She slipped out unnoticed. Now the search began immediately. Within an hour, we knew that she was far, far from home. Now if you don't like pets, what I'm about to say is going to sound strange. But if you do like pets, you will understand. You'll understand why we walked up and down the street calling her name. You'll understand why I drove around the neighborhood at 10.30 at night. You'll understand why I put up a poster in the convenience store and convened the family for a prayer. Honestly, I did. You'll understand why I sent an email to the staff asking for prayers and to her breeder asking for advice. And you'll understand why we were ready to toss the confetti and party when she finally showed up. Here's what happened. The next morning, Damalin, who's his wife, was on her way back home from taking the girls to school when she saw the trash truck. She asked the workers to keep an eye out for Molly and then hurried home to host the mom's prayer group. Soon after the ladies arrived, the trash truck pulled into our driveway. A worker opened the door and outbounded our dog. She had been found. When Denali called to tell me the news, I could barely hear her voice. It was Mardi Gras in the kitchen. The ladies were celebrating the return of Molly. And the story pops with symbolism. The master leaving his house, searching for the lost, victories in the midst of prayer, great things coming out of trash. But most of all, 
the celebration at the coming home. That's something else you have in common with Molly, a party at your homecoming. By that moment, only one bag will remain. Not guilt, it was dropped at Calvary. Not the fear of death, it was left at the grave. The only lingering luggage will be this God-given longing for home. And when you see him, you'll set it down. Just as a returning soldier drops his duffel when he sees his wife, you'll drop your longing when you see your father. Those you love will shout, those you know will applaud, but all the noise will cease when he cups your chin and says, welcome home. And with scarred hand, he'll wipe away every tear from your eye, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The celebration, the promise that we heard when water was poured on our head and sustains us in this time, will be fulfilled. But until then, we cling to this hope, knowing there will be a homecoming party in the future. We cling to the fact that God walks beside us and guides us and calls us to this work in this world, to share the good news of his love in a broken world. We follow the example of our shepherd, loving this world, showing grace and comfort to all who need it, and then we trust that one day we will be guided home to dwell with him forever. For that, we give thanks to God. Amen. We'll now stand and sing our hymn of the day.
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle Shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those who in, whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy. Amen. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation, especially Bob, Doreen, Leona, Erlene, Jan, Sarah, Barb, Judy, Sandy, Pastor Mumford, Joan, Sue, Karen, Patricia, Jim, Nick, Brian, Denise, Bishop Lozano, Brian, Betty, Yvette, Eric, Mary, Meredith, Brad, Ron, Sue, Helen, Lisa, Marilyn, Joyce, the Taylor family, Marge, Joyce, Mike, Danelle, Samantha, Nick, Dan, Bert, Alyssa, Iris, Carmen, Fred, Dick, Bob, and Mark. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy. Here we are. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy. Here we are. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. May your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. For Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. you.
out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all of their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
sing our Sunday hymn.